Hey guys, welcome to the third video for the Events On video tutorial series. Today we are going to be creating an event and a basic calendar. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the dashboard here. I'm going to be clicking on events and add new event. And we're going to be giving it a title. Let's call it spaghetti dinner. Uh, here's the description field. I'm just going to label things on the back end so when they're published, you'll see where they are on the front end um, and kind of where it lays out. Um, on the right-hand side, you'll see some event type categories. Uh, you can create more, so I'm just going to call this uh, dinner. And I'm going to hit add new. There we go. So it automatically adds and it's added itself to that category. Um, you can then subcategorize if you'd like up to five different ones. Uh, I don't see a need for that um, by ba making a basic event, but that's fine if you want to. Um, event subtitle, uh, I'm not going to use one, but uh, it, it is an option. It's a little italicized text underneath the main event description. Um, let's select on an event start date here on the 17th of April, and it's going to end at the same day. Um, it's going to start at 6 p.m. in the evening. And let's go three, or I mean, I'm sorry, 9 p.m. Um, you must set a start and end date for your event or the event will not show up on your calendar. Uh, if you want to simply hide the end time, uh, you can choose this option here. Um, if it goes to like two in the morning, if you don't hide it, uh, technically two in the morning would be April 18th. So you would need to adjust the date to be April 18th, 2 a.m. Um, repeating events, show you this option really quick. You can choose daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. Um, gaps between the events, number of repeats there are. Um, I'm going to do custom and show you this new cool repeat interval you can do. Um, so my first date is April 17th. I don't want it to be exactly a week later. Maybe I want it to be the following Wednesday. So let's choose the 22nd of April. Um, and we'll just throw a random time in here, guys. I'm just not anything specific. So there's that. I can add as many of those as I want any randomized day and repeat it um, as many times as I want to. So now we're down to the location and venue. Um, I'm just going to choose one I've already put in. Um, there's an option here for Google generate Google Maps from the address. I'm going to choose yes. You'll find out that the address that I've, I've chosen here, uh, Google will pick something up. If I don't have a, a street address per se, I can enter the latitude and the longitude of it and it will find it. Um, we've added this nice little um, URL here to find where or how to get those uh, coordinates as well if you have trouble. Um, organizer, I am myself, Michael Gamble, so I'm going to choose that option. It is saved. Um, anytime you enter one in here and publish an event, it will be saved if it is a new uh, organizer. The user interaction, we get a lot of people asking, how do I make it a pop-up? How do I do the slide down? Well, here they are. Here's the slide down accordion. Um, this is an external link if you want to link it to a different page or something on your page or a website or someone else's website for more info and then here's the pop-up I'm gonna choose the pop-up because that's my favorite one uh, learn more about the event you can put in an external URL here it will give your users a an option to open in a new window or learn more you can take them to your website or a different one wherever um, this from video 2 I added a custom meta field so I'm gonna put um, if you watched the video too, I said we could put a link to PayPal or something in there. So if I had a PayPal page that had tickets for sale on it, I could do it here. And if I wasn't using a tickets add-on, um, this is a the easiest way to do it without the add-on. Uh, but we do have a tickets add-on you can use. Um, I'm going to set my featured image. And we're going to throw this landscape in with this person that's standing out here. That is not me. I wish it was. And I wish I had a lake near my house I could go visit, but I don't. Um, not that pretty, anyway. I do have a lake. Um, so I'm going to choose my event color. Let's go with a soft yellowish color. And that is it, guys. That is my event. I'm going to publish it. Spaghetti dinner. And we're going to go to our pages because I need to put this calendar on a page. So let's create a new page 
For instance, if we just had a blank page, I'm going to call it dinners. Uh, or let, you know what, let's call it dinner events. I'm going to add, I clicked on that short code button there. Uh, let's start with the main calendar. We can do the events list later. I'm going to give it a calendar ID. It's a good idea to get into a, a method of giving your calendars every time you create one an ID. That way, if you have a widget on the same page, they won't conflict with each other, um, and they'll all be unique. If you put multiple calendars on the same page and you don't have a calendar ID, you will have JavaScript issues, and your navigation between the months and everything will, will conflict with each other. Um, I'm showing the featured image because I uploaded one. If I don't want to, then I, you know, I don't need to check that. Uh, it's not a featured event. It's not going to only show featured events. I'm not hiding past events. There's no need. Uh, you do have the option to hide past events by their start date and end time. So once an, ev an event starts, um, you can hide it just so people aren't trying to show up to an event late. Or if you want to show an event uh, hiding at its end time and give people the time to get there, you can do that. Um, but And that's only if you choose this option, hide events. Um, sorting your event by date is default. Um, if I want to limit the amount of events, I can limit it here. I'm not going to for this instance. Um, the show load more, show load more events button. It's worded strangely, but uh, load more events button is what would show. Um, if I put like three here, this would give me the option to load three more at a time. If I had more than you know three events, obviously. Uh, month increment uh, that would give me uh, additional months to display. Um, moving on, if I put like plus two it would show the additional two months there. Um, event type, if I wanted to only show dinners, I can show, I can type in 52. So I'm gonna do that. I only wanna show my dinner events here on this page, so I only want to enter 52. If I had just a basic calendar with all my events I want listed, I would leave that blank, and it would show every single event that I had. Uh, event type color override basically means what it says. It, I can override the color of the event that I made for my event, and I can choose um, what color I want that to be from the backend um, settings from event on. Fixed month and year. Um, if I want to show old, really old events like two years ago, I can enter the month and the, the year for that, and then it'll show all the events up to that if I haven't ch chosen or chosen to hide those events. Uh, user interaction. If I want to override the individual interactions, I can choose one here and it will give those um, this new value to all the events listed. Uh, let's go back to language really quick. Um, I did not set a language like I showed you in video number two. You can change the language uh, up to three different languages. Um, by default, it's L1. Uh, if you change that, you can see down here that it is changing the short code. Um, but the default is laying L1. Um, open event carts on load. When your page loads, this option will show all the events expanded, the description, the maps, the featured image, everything. I recommend not doing it if you have more than maybe two or three events on your page, or not at all. Um, sometimes if you have one event listed on a page, that's a good idea to expand it. Um, show jump months option. I'm gonna show that just to show you where that's set at. Um, I started at 2015. Hide sort options. I'm not using any sorting, so I'm going to just skip past those two. Um, accordion effect on event cards. This is kind of nice. I only have one event posted right now, but if you understand the accordion effect, if I have one open, I click a different event with that slide down interaction, it will close the previous event and open the new one. So you don't have 500 events open at one time. Uh, and right to left text on calendar. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Um, this is um, standard in different countries on their websites. So I'm going to hit the button here to insert my short code and hit publish. And let's view the page. Oh, there we go. So you'll see this here twice, obviously, because remember, I did do a custom repeat for the event. So it's now on the 17th of April. I'll click on that. There's my pop-up interaction. There's the featured image I posted. And I just clicked that a few times to open it and expand it. It's kind of nice. Get that out of the way. Um, there's the time, the details. Here's the organization or organizer field with my name and email. Uh, the calendar, if you saw in video two, I enabled these options um, to show the event card download 
to your uh, Apple Calendar or your Google Calendar. And then here is the option that I did as well in video number two with a custom meta field. Um, I could call this, you know, purchase your tickets today for the event. Uh, any text where it says text here can be what you want it to be. And then this would go to paypal.com. Um, and then for the repeating event, which was the, the other one, you know, it's got the same time for the event. And then um, the description field, buy tickets, featured image, same thing. So it's really nice to have that. Uh, here's the jump months option I wanted to show you really quick and we'll get out of this video. Uh, if I want to choose October, I can do that, 2016, different years. Um, here's the arrows. I don't have any other events made, so you're not going to see any. But you can see it's uh, it's rather quickly uh, navigating. Um, that's it for this video, guys. We'll cover more in the next one.